This is the Schmo with the Pro with the number three ranked Bantamweight in the world, nine and one. Aspen Lad here in the flesh in Las Vegas. How we doing? Doing okay. Yes. You're in good spirits considering you had to pull out of your first professional fight in your career. Torn ACL and MCL. When was the official decision made that you can no longer compete in this bout? It was last Thursday. Well, no, last Friday. Because um, up until that point, I, it happened about a week before. And it's like, eh, it's, I, I could train on this. I work with this. So I kept training on it. And I had been um, scheduled to get a cortisone shot. But the, the UFC sends you to somewhere that's, um, it, it's not just your average. I was going to inject you without looking. So this guy's a specialist. He ultrasounded my knee when I went there last Thursday for the cortisone appointment. It's like, uh, you, you need a little bit more than that. He wouldn't give me the shot. He sent me to go get an MRI. And I got my results the next day. He's like, you're, you're definitely not fighting. It's like, okay, that's terrible, but okay. Let's figure it out. Yes. And what are you doing here in Las Vegas? The UFC has you seeing an orthopedic, someone special? Yeah, there's a very good surgeon here. So I'll be meeting with him on Thursday was as soon as we can get in and uh, go from there. If I get that, if I'm a candidate for that kind of surgery, then the recovery time's a lot sooner than it would be with a complete reconstruction. Optimistically, when would be the soonest that you could kind of train again if all goes well? I'm going to do what I can regardless as I'm healing up, try to stay in shape. Um, can't let the muscles actually, you got to keep moving. And I hope to be back before the end of the year, but you never know. Yes. Do you think that Sarah McMahon will still be your opponent? You willing to fight her next or just anyone they put in front of you when you return? Anyone they put in front of me. So it's very frustrating. So you see what's going on right now. Everybody's getting fight. They're fighting back to back to back. It's like, sweet, I want to do that. And then I get injured. So whoever it is, when I come back, I'd like to go get that fight. I'm excited. And then I want to keep fighting. I would love to go back to back to back. But we'll see. When you initially, you know, signed for this bout, were you more excited to fight here in the Apex? Or did you maybe want to fight on Fight Island? Okay, Fight Island, for anybody that's actually been to Abu Dhabi and where it is, it's a hoax. That is not an island. That is the middle of the desert. Technically, it's an island, okay? okay. But you're, it's like Vegas on steroids. Your eyeballs melt when you go outside. It is not a tropical island. So as soon as I saw that information, Brady's like, wow, you're all getting swindled. All right, I would definitely rather fight at the apex. Okay. So at least the desert's close to home. So you saying no turtlenecks for the schmo in Abu Dhabi. It's worse than Vegas here. It feels like your eyeballs are going to melt, and that's compared to, like, even Vegas heat where it feels like a freaking blow dryer in your face all the time. Yes. It's amazing. Now let's talk about your division. Let's talk about the top of your division, the GOAT, Amanda Nunez. She's been contemplating retirement. She's got the crown in both the featherweight division and the bantamweight division. Do you feel like you need to fight her to cement some legacy for your career, or what's your take on her contemplating retirement? My career is a marathon, not a sprint. Okay. If she doesn't retire, fantastic. We'll end up fighting eventually. And if she does, then it's on to the next one. I mean, I'm going to be here a long time. At least that's my plan. So whoever has the strap, if I end up fighting for the strap, it doesn't really... I don't think about it too much. I don't reflect on it. If it's still Amanda, great. Yes. Now, what about the featherweight division, though? I mean, they don't even have rankings in the featherweight division. What do you think about the future of that division in the UFC? I 100% would fight in the featherweight division. I, that would be a healthy, like, no water cut, that kind of thing. And there's a bunch of 35ers that we're natural 45ers if you're not cutting water. So I would gladly take fights in that division as well, especially, like, maybe I'll take a 35 fight, and then a few weeks later, hey, you want this one at 45? Yes, I do. That's what I was going to ask you about because we just saw Cynthia Calvillo. She moved up from strawweight to flyweight. She's had some success. And maybe for someone like you who's missed weight and bantamweight, featherweight might be your calling. Bantamweight is my division, but I am so open to fighting in multiple divisions. Well said. We'll have to tell the boss man or he'll just have to watch this video. Absolutely. Hey, I was planning on it, but now my, my plans are delayed for a little while. Yes, they are. And someone like you, you're active. You like to hike the outdoors, Northern California. I'm not going to call you a weird hippie gal, but you like to be outdoors and one with nature. Don't you think this pandemic and social distancing plays to your favor? Is it just business as usual for you? I, I um, like to say I was antisocial before it was cool. I am a natural introvert, so it doesn't bother me in the least. And hiking, being out in nature, that's kind of my thing. Um, 
for a while I, I'm walking in very straight small lines but I could still get out and do that so that's good and uh, yeah are you someone that needs to avenge your losses? I brought up Cynthia Calvillo. You lost to her. Your only time losing as an amateur. And then GDR, your only time losing as a pro. Are you someone that wants to fight those two or need to avenge your losses to feel good inside? I'm not. So I don't really reflect on it that way. It's just whatever opponent's next. If it ends up being the same opponent again, I've only faced that once with Sajara. Um, if it ends up being the same opponent, if it ends up being a GDR, or it wouldn't be Cynthia at this point. We're just way different sizes. But I, I don't really sit there and like, oh gosh, I have to do this. Like, no, just give me somebody, give me somebody good, let's go fight. Final message for all the Aspen Lad fans, the Schmo's keeping it clean at the bar stool. You see, we got all of our product in place. I think it's very impressive, and I'll be back as soon as I can. Well said. She's the pro Aspen lad on the schmo. Speedy recovery. Best of luck. You're a trooper. We're out.